Hello everyone, welcome to my channel The Teaching Show. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, press the bell icon for more updates. Don't forget to like this video. Thank you. So uh, in uh, these series of videos, we are developing a course on process calculations. So in the last video, we had seen material balance without reaction on continuous steady state processes. We will be continuing on that theme in this video as well. Last time we saw a distillation and um, a humidification process. Uh, in this video, we will see uh, evaporator problem and a liquid-liquid extraction problem. So just to recap, uh, we had seen previously what is a general balance equation. Uh, it takes the form input plus generation minus output minus consumption that is equal to accumulation. Now since this is a steady state process, so accumulation term is zero. No reaction is taking place, so not, no matter is being generated or no species is being generated or consumed in a chemical reaction. So generation and consumption terms are also zero. And your general balance equation takes the simplest form of input is equal to output. So let's apply now uh, whatever we have learned till now to this problem at hand, which is a liquid liquid extraction. So before starting the problem, I will give you a brief idea of what is liquid liquid extraction. Suppose I have a solute A which is uh, dissolved in solvent B. This can be these can be two miscible liquids A and B which are difficult to separate by distillation uh, because their volatilities are very close or it may happen that they form a zeotropic mixture. So or maybe distillation is not economically a feasible process to separate them. It's very energy intensive. So I just want to separate A from B. Um, so what other strategy I can use? I can use another extracting solvent C. This solvent C and the solvent B, they are immiscible with each other. Okay, so we select a solvent C, which is immiscible with solvent B, but solute A partitions more in solvent C as compared to solvent B. Okay, so what we are doing is we are taking this mixture and I want to separate A. So what I will do is I will take a mixture of A and B, add solvent C, mix it well. After mixing, what will happen? Because solute A has more affinity or it partitions more in solvent C, what it will do is it will try to go in the solvent C as shown by the yellow uh, face over here. So um, once I have mixed them properly, I have allowed, uh, I have given sufficient time for A to go into solvent C, then I just um, leave this whole mixture, allow the two invisible solvents to separate out. What you see is that these uh, solute A, which is depicted by red dots, it has gone, gone more in the solvent C and it has left the solvent B. Okay, so I have, what I have done, I have effectively moved solute A from solvent B to solvent C. Now, after keeping it for some time, uh, it settles the, these two phases they just you know separate from each other I can separate these two phases okay now whatever the uh, solvent B rich phase it is lean in solute A I call it raffinate phase and uh, the solvent C rich phase that is rich in solute A and I call it extract usually I choose a solvent C which has a very different volatility from solute A so that I can now take this mixture and flash distill it or any other type of distillation I can do and I can separate uh, basically A from C. So that's how I can get pure A from uh, a mixture of A and C which was very difficult to obtain initially from a mixture of A and B. So this is your liquid liquid extraction and let's see the problem. So just for simplicity in this problem I have given you the flow chart and I am asking you to calculate the unknown flow rates that is the amount of hexanol or amount of solvent C which is required to separate acetic acid from water the flow rate is given uh, and you also have to find out what is the flow rate of extract and raffinate phase given their compositions okay so just look take a look at this flow chart uh, it's fully labeled all the unknown I have marked again with uh, symbols and all the known I have indicated on the flowchart. Okay, so I have told you fully labeled flowchart makes it very easy to tackle the problem. 
now let's start uh, so step one and step two has been done i have made the flow chart and i have fully labeled it with all the knowns and unknowns now what is our uh, third step i have to find out how many independent balance equations i can write so let's count for that we have to count how many components are there so let's count the components one is hexanol the other is acetic acid the third is water okay so we have three components so i should be able to write three independent equations well okay so that much part is done now let's see next step will be which equation will be easy to solve so what we do for that first of all we will go and find out uh, which of the component it appears in least number of flow streams okay so let's see water it appears in uh, this feed flow feed flow and the water it is there in this raffinate phase okay is there a water anywhere else no so uh, water might be a good thing to start uh, good component to start so let's write down water balance you might also say that okay hexanol is also appearing in one uh, inlet and one outlet flow stream but if i write down equation i don't know both m dot c and m dot e so then there will be one equation and two unknowns which i will not be able to solve but here the feed flow rate is given so if i write down water balance i should be able to quickly find out m dot r okay so let's start with the uh, water balance okay so the water which is going in that is equal to 400 into 0.885 that is the um, mass fraction of this water in the feed so 400 into 0.885 that is equal to 0.995 into m dot r so solving this i get the amount of raffinate which is coming out uh, per minute then i have now two choices i can write either a hexanol balance or i can write uh, any other balance let's see so if i just go and check hexanol balance uh, let's see over here yeah hexanol balance again what's happening there are two unknowns i cannot write hexanol balance so what i can do is uh, let's see because this uh, stream is known completely this stream is known this stream is not known okay so acetic acid balance if i write uh, only this thing is unknown so let's start with uh, now uh, next step will be to write acetic acid balance so i'm going to write acetic acid balance incoming that is equal to uh, the amount which is there in the raffinate play phase plus the amount which is there in the extract phase write it down one equation one unknown solve it and you directly get the uh, flow rate of the extract phase once you have mr dot and me dot now it, it's very easy either you can use a hexanol balance or you can use an overall balance most of the time we see that overall balance is very simple so i will just write mc dot plus 400 that is equal to me dot plus mr dot and directly it will give you the amount of solvent which is required which it comes out to be 416.41 grams per minute so very easy problem right okay let's now again uh, let's go to next problem which is on evaporation okay uh, first let's see the problem statement now it says an evaporator is being fed with 15000 kg per hour of solution and the composition of that feed flow is given so you have 10% nacl 15% naoh and rest is water I have marked the components by 1, 2 and 3. So NaCl is component 1, NaOH is component 2 and water is component 3. In this evaporation process, what is happening? Water is being evaporated and NaCl is precipitated as crystals. And we are interested in thick, thick liquor which is leaving the evaporator and it contains 45% NaOH, 2% NaCl and rest is water. So I have been asked to calculate how much is the water which has been evaporated, how much salt has precipitated out and what is the amount of thick liquor which is coming out per hour. Okay, on the first look this problem looks very difficult but let's go and tackle this problem with the method we have developed. So what we will do is first of all let's draw a flow chart. So it says an evaporator. So first draw a box, label it as evaporator. Now it says it is fed with 15,000 kg per hour of solution. Let's do that. So I'm feeding 15,000 kg per hour of solution and I have marked the uh, 
composition also. So all these are 0 0.1, 10%. So this is mass fraction is 0 0.1, 15% mass fraction is 0 0.15 of NaOH and rest is water. So 1 minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.15 that comes out to be 0 0.75 mass fraction of water. Okay. Next it says in the operation water is evaporated. So let's mark that water is coming out and uh, NaCl is precipitated and thick liquor leaves. So okay, we have now three outgoing streams. Let's mark one by one all of them. So liquor is coming out, uh, thick liquor, its composition is given. So it's uh, 0.45 of NaOH, 0.02 NaCl mass fraction and 0.53 that is remaining is water. I've just calculated 0.53 by subtracting um, 0.02 and 0.45 from 1. Okay, and then the third stream is NaCl which has crystallized out. So this is my total or my complete flow chart. What I have done, I have labeled it properly with all the knowns and the unknowns. Unknowns I have marked as uh, symbols M1 dot, M3 dot and M2 dot. Now what you see over here is that calculate the kg per hour of water evaporated that is m1 dot kg per hour of salt precipitated that is m2 dot and kg per hour of thick liquor that is m3 dot okay so half of the work is done now let's count how many components are there three so how many independent equations you can write again three okay so i'm going to write three independent equations let's see from where we should start so I have told you start with the balance uh, of that component which appears in the least number of streams. So out of these let's see water, NaCl uh, and liquor. So you can start uh, with uh, NaCl is there over here as well, water is here as well. So both water and NaCl they appear in two outgoing streams. Only I think NaOH that is X2 and Y2 okay. Uh, so the mass fractions are denoted by x2 and y2 so only NaOH it appears in only one incoming and one outgoing stream so i will start with NaOH so on taking NaOH balance uh, it's very simple okay 0.15 that is mass fraction into the flow rate that is 15000 that is equal to 0.45 into m.3 okay so m.3 is the only unknown one equation one unknown solve it and get the value of m.3 so the amount of thick liquor which is coming out is 5000 kg per hour next uh, we will go and take either i can take an acl balance or water balance okay let's go with water balance so uh, 0.75 into 15000 that is equal to m1 dot plus 0.53 into m.3 since i know m.3 so again this equation reduces to one equation one unknown and i calculate m1 dot which comes out to be 8600 kg per hour of water which is coming out okay so that is this much amount of water is getting evaporated in this evaporator okay next uh, the only thing which is remaining is to calculate m2 dot i can calculate it either using nacl balance or overall balance you will see that after you have taken two component balances usually it becomes easier to take overall balance so I will take again overall balance so uh, coming in must be equal to going out that is input is equal to output so m2 dot that will be equal to 15,000 minus m1 dot plus m3 dot oh okay this should be minus m3 dot okay so it should be uh, 15,000 minus 8,600 minus 5,000 so m2 dot is 1400 kg per hour so very simple initially this problem looked very complicated but once you make a flow chart fully label it identify the independent e balance equations which you can write then if you identify which equation to solve first and then which equations to solve later you will simplify the problem i hope you uh, understood uh, how to uh, tackle the problem uh, what methodology you should use uh, see you in the uh, next video and uh, thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video thank you so much